What's up everyone, welcome back to Lace Up Channel. My name's Mickey. In this video, we're gonna talk about just how efficient your distribution business is. We're gonna utilize 13 key performance indicators used across the industry to measure warehouse efficiency, route efficiency, and profitability. Anyways, let's get right into it. All right, look, before we get into the KPIs, I want you to take a moment, go down below, hit the subscribe. I'm trying to make distribution friendly business advice for people like you to help you to provide value for you. Look, all I'm trying to do is help, so give me that subscribe. Anyways, let's get back into those KPIs. The first KPI you need to track and look at every single day is your order lead time. So how long does it take from the time a customer places an order to a time you dispatch the order, or ship the order, how long does that time period take? Is it five days, six days, seven days? Well, once you've documented this KPI, the most important thing you can do is share that with the customer. You don't know just how much the customer will appreciate knowing your lead times. That way they can plan accordingly and incorporate that lead time into their projection functions to be able to place their purchase orders. So order lead time is extremely critical when it comes to providing optimal customer service and customer support. The second warehouse KPI to keep an eye on is your back order rate. So let's say for instance, somebody places an order for 10 bananas and you're only able to fill eight of those bananas. That means that there were two bananas that you were unable to fill. Well, back order rate measures the undelivered quantity over the total ordered quantity by customer. So in this case, you were unable to deliver two bananas, 10 total bananas were ordered, which means that you have a back order rate of 20%. When you have a back order rate that's high, that means that you're doing a poor job at inventory management or your vendors are doing a poor job at delivering product as they should. And these things are indicative to you that you need to make a change. Either A, you need to re-optimize the way you're tracking inventory, re-optimize your formulas, or B, you need to change up the vendor. But anyways, the back order rate is extremely important. The third KPI is picking accuracy. You wanna see just how accurate your pickers are at picking product. Now, how do you control this picking accuracy? It's simple. You wanna measure the number of orders incorrectly picked over the total orders picked for the day. That gives you your inaccuracy percentage. So for instance, let's say that I picked 100 orders today. Three of those orders were incorrect. That means that my incorrectly picked percentage is 3%, which on the inverse size means that I picked 97% correctly, right? Now, how do you measure this? Measuring picking accuracy is quite simple. You wanna have a secondary checking process before the order goes from the warehouse to the truck. Just an overview of each order of what's on each pallet utilizing a piece of paper or even a warehouse management system. This enables you to ensure that the right product for the right order is going to the right customer. And if you find that the accuracy is incorrect, then you can dock that as an inaccurate order. Moreover, customers mostly refuse or return orders that are picked incorrectly. Anytime you get one of these refusals or one of these returns, you wanna document it as well, because these also go into this picking accuracy. Over the course of a month, you wanna be able to take how many orders did I pick let's say it was a thousand orders and how many were inaccurate let's say it was 10 orders that means that one percent of your orders were picked inaccurately and now you could push your team to strive for an even lower percentage the fourth kpi is labor and equipment utilization now what do i mean guys most of us know what the potential output of our warehouse is why? Because we know that in any given day, we have the best day and the worst day. So let's use the best day as the most baseline number, right? So let's say that on the best day, my warehouse picks 100 orders. But today, they only picked 80. And tomorrow, they only picked 90. And the day after, they only picked 70, which puts my average right around 80. What is going on? If my best day ever is 100 and my average is around 80, then that means somebody's being inefficient some machine is down and not working, something is going on, the warehouse should be able to maintain the same rhythm to their picking on a mean. And if they don't, that means that somebody or something is being extremely inefficient. Number five, check-in time. What is a check-in time? So a check-in time is the amount of time a product goes from being in the receiving area to being into a put-away bin. Now, for those of you with a WMS system, you know that until a product is put away, it's not considered to be available, which means that your sales reps are unable to sell it. This means in short, lost sales if the product is not put away in an adequate enough time. 
So you wanna measure this check-in time. You wanna measure how long the product sits in your dock, how long the product sits in a non-pickable zone before that product gets put away so that you can optimize that time to bring availability to the product faster and then to enable your sales reps to sell it on the fly. So now we've covered all the warehouse KPIs. Let's move into the profitability KPIs. The six KPI and the first profitability KPI is your inventory turnover ratio. So at all points, you wanna know exactly when a product was brought into your warehouse and at what point it cycled out. You wanna know how fast your product is rotating. This rotation allows you to compute and calculate how many out of dates and out of stocks you're gonna have. Now, when you know this inventory turnover ratio, you also know if there's always an appropriate level of inventory. Because if the product is not rotating, that means that your inventory is satisfied. That means that you have enough and you probably have too much. But if your product is rotating quickly, then you can compute when you're going to run out of inventory so that you can put in your reorders. And that's extremely critical to your profitability. Because the more product you maintain on hand, the more that orders fill, the more that product rotates, the more profitable your business becomes. Number seven, storage productivity you need to know what percentage of your bins are filled at any point in time. This is extremely important because you may have a warehouse that's too large, which means that you could downsize your warehouse and instantly boost your productivity and your profitability. So how do you do this? Essentially, you wanna take the number of bins available in your warehouse and you wanna take the number of bins occupied. The number of bins occupied divided by the number of bins available gives you a storage or occupancy percentage. And this occupancy percentage indicates to you just how much you need of warehouse space. Let's say for instance, you've got a thousand bins in your warehouse and only a hundred are occupied at any point in time. That means that your warehouse is only being utilized at 10%, which is really interesting because that probably means that you have square footage that you're paying a monthly lease payment on that you don't need. And switching from uh, that square footage to perhaps a smaller square footage will give an instant boost to your profitability. So now let's move to the route KPIs. Number eight, improper returns due to improper picking. So what do I mean guys? How many times have you had a route go out and then return subsequently with an entire order on it because the order was put on correctly in the route? More specifically, how many times have you had a route go out and as that route was having that order received by the customer, they returned or refused two to three items? Well, Every single time this happens, when the truck returns, you need to document what is the return rate of the orders going on the truck. Because this lets you know just how accurate is your picking, just how accurate is your truck loading, and that way you can optimize those parameters within the warehouse to ensure that the right order with the right product always goes to the right customer. KPI number nine, order cycle time. This is the average difference in time between the placement of one order and the placement of another order. Let's say that you visit and place an order for a customer every five days. You do it on Monday, you do it on Friday, you do it on Wednesday, right? Then you do it on Monday again. That's every five days. You take each of the differences between one placement and the other. Okay, let's say it's five, 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 and you divide it by the number of placements. Four, that gives you an average of five days in between placements. Now, you wanna compare this average time in between placements against your credits for that customer and against your out of stocks for that customer. So your sales rep application, your sales rep system should enable you to capture what the customer's on hand is. Your sales rep application should be able to capture credits and sales, right? Utilizing these values, you can compute if you're having too many out of stocks or too little out of stocks, which means too many credits. So remember your order cycle time will allow you to enable exactly or to know exactly how many days in between a placement of an order and a placement of the other. Point number 10, on-time delivery, perhaps one of the most important points. You wanna know out of how many orders you delivered, how many of those were delivered on time. So what does an on-time delivery mean? You wanna compare when an order was delivered versus what lead time you gave the client. Okay, so for instance, if the client places a purchase order on Monday and their lead time is supposed to be five days then the order should be delivered by you on Friday. Now this is a really easy concept. What happens if it's delivered on Saturday? That means that you've been delayed one day for that customer, which means you've inconvenienced the customer. They've likely lost sales and so have you. Overall, it's an inefficient operation. So 
what you want to do maintain the ratio of delivered orders that were not on time over total orders delivered and this will give you a delinquency on time value and it'll allow you to make an on time delivery kpi Point 11, and perhaps the most straightforward and most common sense, the fuel economy per vehicle. You wanna know how much gas each vehicle is expending. That way you can factor in, if you wanna reduce the number of vehicles on the road, perhaps you wanna put more product on one route, remove product from another, because as long as you have a vehicle out on the street, you have a higher probability to waste gas, a higher probability to get into an accident, higher incidence of, a, of, a, of somebody getting hurt. These are all problems and all cost your business. But by knowing your miles per gallon, which is pretty straightforward, right? It says it on most every dash on every truck, you know just what the cost is for every mile driven. Point number 12, drop size. It's super important to know how big each of your deliveries is. Because let's say you've got a delivery driver out there making 10 deliveries for 100 total dollars in value. That means that each delivery is only $10. What could your gross profit be on a delivery that's $10? Hmm? I can promise you, it's either this or it's nothing. Guys, you need to know your average drop size. For instance, let's say that a driver's got 10 stops, okay, and they have in the 10 stops a total order value of, uh, I don't know, $450. That means that your average drop size is $45. Your goal is to increase the average drop size in order to maximize the profitability of a route and of the delivery. The 13th and final KPI you need to be looking at is the numeric distribution KPI. The numeric distribution KPI measures the number of authorized products for a store versus the number of products actually sold into the store. So let's say that with a store you've got 100 authorized products, but your sales reps sell the same 20 products into the store. Well, you need to apply some pressure because their numeric distribution is only 20%. Why isn't it 80%? Why aren't they getting eight out of every 10 products that you have into that store, even though the product is authorized? Isn't that crazy? That just shows laziness on behalf of the sales rep. Now, when you look at this numeric distribution, what's gonna happen is you are going to increase drastically the size of your orders, the distribution of your products within stores, the exposure of your brand, and the overall health and profitability of your business. That, to me, is the most single most important KPI there is. So I hope you guys enjoyed the 13 KPIs necessary to measure the efficiency of your business. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you disagreed, give me a thumbs down. I don't care, just comment down below and let me know what's up. Anyways, I hope that you have a great day. Take care. Thank you.